EVGO is an electric vehicle charging company that specializes in DC fast charging for EVs in the United States. It is in the process of merging with a SPAC called Climate Change Crisis Real Impact One Acquisition Corporation, ticker CLII. The business combination is expected to be completed in the second quarter of 2021. After the business combination is completed, the ticker symbol is expected to change from CLII to EVGO. I first talked about this blank check company two weeks ago in my three SPACs to buy now video for January 2021. Congratulations if you bought back then because you'd be up over 100% on the common stock and over 200% on the warrant. Be sure to check that video out if you haven't yet. I'll leave a link in the video description. In this video, I'm first gonna give a high-level overview of EVGO. Second, I'm gonna go over my bull case for the stock. Third, I'm gonna go over my bear case. Fourth, I'm gonna go over my game plan for the common stock and the warrants, and whether or not I plan to add EVGO into my EV peer play portfolio. And finally, I've got a couple of announcements about the new free Wolves of Investing Discord server and the limited time $30 M1 Finance sign up bonus. All this right after. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Learn to invest like a wolf at your own risk. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Wolves of Investing. My name is Donnie Nguyen and I'm the founder of Wolves of Investing. If you're new, my channel is primarily about investing in the stock market. If you want to learn how to achieve financial freedom through investing, be sure to click on that subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't yet. And please remember to drop a like on this video if you enjoy it as it truly helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What is EVGO? Founded in 2010, EVGO is the United States' largest public fast charging network for electric vehicles and the first to be powered by 100% renewable electricity. With more than 800 fast charging locations in 67 major metropolitan markets across 34 states, EVGO owns and operates the most public DC fast charging locations in the United States and serves more than 220,000 customers and has an industry-leading uptime of approximately 98%. EVGO has commercial relationships with large automotive OEMs, including General Motors, Nissan, and Tesla, rideshare operators including Lyft and Uber, and major property owners for its host sites, including Albertsons, Wawa, and Kroger. It has a strategic relationship with General Motors, which selected EVGO for a nationwide EV charging infrastructure build-out, whereby EVGO expects to add more than 2,700 additional fast chargers to its network over the next five years. A few other key points from this slide that I haven't already mentioned are that it currently has 1,412 DC fast chargers on its network, 83% of Californians live within 10 miles of an EVGO charger, and I can attest to that as I do live in California, and the nearest EVGO is only a couple of miles from my house at the local supermarket. 41% of Americans live within 10 miles of an EVGO charger. EVGO has 50% of the retail DC market share. They have 45% year-over-year retail throughput growth, 48% direct margin in 2020, and they're the only charge partner engaged by multiple OEMs to build out a DCFC network. EVGO has a history rooted in firsts. EVGO was founded by NRG Energy in 2010, which makes sense because the CEO and founder of the CLII SPAC, David Crane, was the former CEO of NRG. So I kind of suspected that EVGO would be a target. 
They were the first urban fast charging station, the first in OEM partnerships with BMW and Nissan, the first to 500 locations, the first 150 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt charger in the United States, won an ESNA award for a storage project, first to win Appendix D grant statewide, first dedicated ride share charging depots, first to offer modular mobile DCFCs, which I think is pretty cool. Customers can set up a temporary fast charging station with EVgo, first to go 100% renewable and first to 800 fast charging locations. First multi-city partner with Lyft and first to partner with Uber. First to implement bilateral interoperability where customers can connect with other charging networks like ChargePoint through roaming agreements. First to partner with Avis and Budget. First nationwide infrastructure build out with GM. First to partner with an autonomous fleet. And first charging network with integrated Tesla connectors. EV charging is growing rapidly, but DCFC is growing faster. EVgo's estimated market share of the serviceable addressable market in 2021 is 9% and projected to grow to around 21% by 2026. If they can accomplish that, that would give them a huge economic moat. EVgo has strategic partnerships with Tesla, General Motors, and Nissan which differentiates itself from its competitors. EVgo is the only non-Tesla DC fast charger. The contract with GM will have new stations available to customers in early 2021 in highly visible areas. Most will be able to charge at least four vehicles at a time. Stations will feature charging technology with 100 to 350 kilowatt capabilities to meet the needs of new EVs coming to market. And they've been partnering with Nissan, who has the Nissan LEAF, since 2014. Their annual customer accounts are growing faster than the market with 41% customer compound annual growth rate from 2017 to 2020 versus 11% for non-Tesla vehicles in operation growth. They grew from 80,000 customer accounts in 2017 to 224,000 in September of 2020. They had an average net promoter score of 41 in October of 2020. Between 2018 and 2020, their social media engagement is up 1.3x, their website visits are up 1.6x, and their app downloads are up 3x. Some of their product offerings that are either underway or coming this year are EVgo Access, which gives customers smart access to chargers within parking lots and garages within their app. EVgo Advantage, which gives customers coupons to local retailers and restaurants while charging. Reservations, which ensures that a charger is available upon arrival. And Rewards, which lets customers earn and redeem rewards while charging. I am really excited about these product offerings because one of the main reasons I'm investing in charging companies is for their ability to use their immense customer data for digital advertising like Facebook and Google do. And in my opinion, I think that these coupon offerings offer huge growth potential and is something that no one else is talking about. Other than Tesla, EVgo has the most number of DC fast charging infrastructure at 818 and its nearest competitor has 560. And its partnership with GM should expand their DC fast charging leadership in the coming years. Unlike many other EV startups, EVgo actually does have revenues, albeit small. They had $18 million in revenues in 2019, which decreased to 14 million in 2020 due to the global health crisis and lockdowns which makes sense since less people are driving. They expect to have positive EBITDA in 2023 and be free cash flow positive in 2024. And they expect their operating costs, which were 260% of sales in 2020 and expected to be 332% in 2021 to fall to 19% of 
of sales by 2027. Long term, they expect most of their revenues to come from fleet compared to retail. Here is their financial forecast. They expect to grow from $14 million in revenues in 2020 to $1.29 billion in 2027. Adjusted EBITDA is projected to grow from negative 29 million in 2020 to 507 million dollars in 2027. This would be immense growth if they can achieve it. But as always, you know that I look at these projections with a very high amount of skepticism. After the business combination, there's expected to be 263.1 million shares outstanding. At $10 per share, that would be a market cap of $2.6 billion. They will have zero debt and $575 million in cash for an enterprise value of $2.1 billion. Proceeds from their transaction will be used to primarily fund the build out of its charging infrastructure network. Existing EVgo shareholders will own 74.4%. Pipe investors will own 15.2%. SPAC shareholders will own 8.7%. And SPAC sponsors will own 1.6%. EVgo is led by CEO Kathy Zoy, who will continue leading their company after the business combination. All right, so that was my high level overview of EVgo and the business combination. I didn't cover all of the investor presentation, so I encourage you to take a look at it yourself. And I'll leave a link to the investor presentation in the video description. So what is my bull case for the stock? I'm gonna use 2026 revenues from EVgo's investor presentation. And because I wanna be as conservative as possible, I'm gonna cut that estimate in half. The investor presentation projects $905 million in revenues in 2026. So if I divide that by two, I get $452.5 million. And remember, even though I'm cutting it in half, this still represents immense growth of over 85% CAGR from its 2021 estimate of $20 million. I'm gonna give a 40X price to sales multiple, which is very high, but if a company can grow at 85% CAGR, 40X is probably reasonable. So 40X price to sales would give a market cap of $18.1 billion. The SPAC closed at $22 on Friday, which based on 263.1 million shares outstanding, implies a market cap of $5.8 billion. So in my opinion, the likely upside in my bull case is over 200% gains in five years. So what is my bear case? In my bear case, I assume that they only achieve 25% of their expected revenues, which would be $226 million. This again is a high CAGR of over 60%. I give them a price to sales ratio of 20 in this case, which would be a market cap of $4.5 billion and a price decrease of 22% in five years. So what is my game plan? Currently, I only own the CLII warrants. I sold out of my common stock yesterday at $21 per share for a 96.8% gain from my buy price of $10.67. And I am totally fine if the SPAC keeps shooting up to $30 or more because it did hit my price target. And these SPACs, especially pre-merger, do have a tendency to shoot up really high. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think it has something to do with the low float of the SPAC before the merger. And I sold out of most of my warrants yesterday at $6.99 for a gain of 142% from my cost basis of $2.88. I'm still keeping a small amount of my warrants just in case there's a massive spike to above $13, which is where I would consider selling the rest of my warrants. For now, I don't plan to add EVgo to my EV Pure Play portfolio. The only EV charging companies I own in the portfolio are SBE, which is merging with ChargePoint, and NBAC, which is merging with NuV. The reason I'm not adding EVgo yet is because they have far less locations than ChargePoint. One of the reasons I'm investing in charging companies is because I think there is an immense opportunity for them to cross-sell 
digital advertising. Very similar to what Facebook and Google do. Now, I haven't heard anyone else talk about this, and this is just my personal opinion, but I wanna invest in the charging companies with the biggest networks, which is why I have Tesla and ChargePoint in the portfolio for now. Although I really like the company, I'm gonna wait to see how the EVgo build-out goes with GM before I decide to invest. Another reason I'm not investing in EVgo yet is because their app on the Google Play Store only has a 3.7 star rating compared to ChargePoint's app, which has a rating of 4.6 stars. And I think that the app has a lot to do with customer satisfaction. All right, so just a couple of announcements. This Monday, I'm starting a free Wolves of Investing Discord community to talk about SPACs and other stocks. So make sure you subscribe to get notified of when that happens. And I'll leave a link to the Discord in the video description. And for a limited time, M1 Finance is offering a $30 sign-up bonus if you sign up with my link in the video description and deposit $100 both you and I will receive $30. All right, so let me know what you think about EVgo and what other SPACs you're watching. Drop me a line in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on this video before leaving. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.